Jemima Kirk is here. I'm so excited. I've been a huge fan of yours, obviously, since Girls. Like, everyone wanted to be you on Girls. The hair. Do you miss the long hair? No. Really? No, not at all. Um, no, I never. I begged to. I begged Lena to let me cut it from the second season. I was like, I'm just so tired. Especially when I turned 30. I was like, this is not. It's not appropriate. I just, I, I, I do believe in age appropriate wear. I know that some people <laughs> are really against that. Yeah. But I'm like, this is just too long for a 30 something. It's great for your 20s, but I had it. It's, it's, it's documented everywhere. Yeah. And now, and then, so I, this, I love the chopped look for a long time. And now I'm doing, I'm, I don't know, I'm not thinking. Well, you have good hair in general, but. Thank you. Okay, so you were just on Girls and. I read that you are an artist, so you weren't even interested in being an actress until Lena was like, come do this thing with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I went to, well, that was the blueprint, that was the plan, was I was going to paint for a living. And uh, then Lena and I hadn't seen each other in years since school. And we reconnected and she's like, oh, I'm making this film, you know, so the kind of thing you just, do after school you know just make your own film and see what happens and she's like will you be in it I'm like yeah why not and then and that was tiny furniture and then I got pregnant and I, I was uh she approached me to do she was like I got this pilot for HBO and I was I said no and she was like well you you probably probably won't even get picked up and if it does you'll just be sort of a, on and off maybe a cameo Let's yeah just, just do a couple episodes I still said no. Why? Did because you not like I it? Was, no, I was just, well, the, yeah, that was, that was that too. I've actually never said that before. I didn't like it. I read it and I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't, you didn't I'm like the character I was you were like, supposed to do? No, everyone's going to hate this. Like this is not, this, this is, it was, to me it was too, um, it, w it was slow. Like I read it and it was slow. I thought mm. this, no one's going to be interested in this. It felt too realistic. Yeah. And um, I guess that, was exactly what people were drawn to. Right. But then I, I, they, they raised the amount of money that they were offering me, and I said, fine, I'll do the pilot. But just sort of hoping everything would fall into place. And it did, just not in the way that I, expect, I wanted it to at first. But I'm actually, I'm happy. Wait, I, so you had your baby, though, before girls? You yeah, had your first about, kid? About three, three to five weeks before. So you filmed five weeks after, after how? The baby. I brought the baby with me and, uh, and had a, a nanny with me. And I had never done any sort of commercial or sort of acting on any big scale other than Lena's movie. And so I was a massive pain in the ass and, and such a diva before I, I, it was- Like what, asking for shit? Yes, asking for stuff, and I mean that's in my nature to be a <laughs> bit, a bit um, direct about what I what I want and need. But in on a, in a workspace, you know, there's a there is a you know a way of being part of the group. That yeah, I didn't get. Uh, you know, they would the PA would come and knock on my trailer door for me and say, you know, Jemima, we're ready for you, which means get out there within yeah. two minutes. And I'd be like, I've been waiting for two hours, so you can wait for me too. <laughs> Like that, I, did, I mean, or not knowing, I mean, this was probably charming. That was not charming, but the, the you know, the I, I didn't know where the camera was. I didn't know where my marks were. I didn't know that. that, that Wait, did you audition for it? No. So she just took, Lena was so, just like, I want so you to be in it. She said, she wants me to be in it. I said no, and that was that. And then um, they started, uh, her and I suppose, um, Jenny Connor and um, Judd Apatow started auditioning other actors. And um, I did see some of them. I'm not even sure if that's allowed, but I did watch some of the auditions with her just for fun. Um, and there were some people that, I don't know if I'm allowed to say who, but there were some famous people who, people who weren't at the time. And um, I think it was her way of, of like reeling me in. I don't oh. know. If I was, maybe I was subconsciously a bit jealous. Oh, like, oh, she's going to do it. I was like, no, it. no, 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 no. She's oh. doing it right. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, 
She's good. Yeah, she's pretty. But, but did yeah. Lena say to you straight up, like, Jemima, this is kind of based on you, this character, Jessa? Yeah, yeah. It Well, when we did Tiny Furniture, the character was, we discussed, it was like, a sort of conglomerate of all the people uh, that some people that we knew, some eccentrics, some stories that Lena had about me because she remembers everything, mm. everything. She remembers so much that I think a lot of it's embellished. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. As memories are, um, but and so that was the tiny furniture one, and then Jessa was based off of that character. And as she's writing it, though. Um, you know, as she did with all the characters, she's pulling from her relationship with the actors. Mm. So that's how Girls is sort of un set, is sort of unlike other shows, and it's something that bothered me for a long time that we were all so associated with our characters. Yeah. And then I recently realized I was like, well, we were because it was written that way. You know, it, you know, it, despite ourselves we didn't I don't think we realized at the time that it was kind that she was doing that and she so at yeah. first I read that you showed up and you were like I'm just gonna be me like everyone was like just be you kind of they, no, no what I don't know what you read but it's more it was more like you don't know how to learn lines yet <laughs> so just when you can't remember the lines just keep talking and I, I was comfortable doing that and Judd and Lena love Improv, yeah, and so I, uh, my first experience of you know the first season at least maybe the second a bit was mostly improv. Wow. Uh, yes, I, I now I do know how to learn lines and I and um, very well if anyone's hiring, <laughs> um, but at the time I really didn't. And I think, uh, uh, yeah, there was this th there's this thing that Judd does where he, you have a line, maybe it's an entry line, you walk into a room and you have a line to say, which is like, oh, you know, it's so hot outside. He'd say, okay, change it every time. Just, okay, go again. And there's no time to breathe or think. Yeah. You just have to change it and you don't, no, without thinking about it, the most ridiculous things come out. Um, and I remember there was a line which was, every time I do coke, I, and he, I don't remember what the original thing was, but, I just changed it every time as I was instructed to do. And so what did, do you remember what it turned out to well, be? Well, one, the one they used, and I ended up laughing on the take because it was such a ridiculous thing. Yeah. Was probably the 10th one. I said, uh, every time I do coke, I shit myself and end up fucking a homeless man. <laughs> I, just, I remember I that. <laughs> I remember that. Wait, was that at that party? It, no, it was the first episode, I think, and they're all in um, in one of their apartments. I don't know. They're, it's all the characters together. So, but when, okay, so you, I remember as a viewer, like, I feel like when, I don't remember what season, but when you got with Adam, right, mm -hmm. I feel like you were more, like, into the acting part yeah. of it, right? You uh, were, like, yeah. naked, yeah. you were, like, feeling all these things, you weren't just, like, I Jessa, mean, I would have been naked fuck. anyway, <laughs> but, uh, but you're right that um, the first, the first two, two or three seasons that I was, um, yeah, a bit defensive, you know, I was a bit, uh, I was not fully on board and I was being, I was, there was a petulance to the way I, you know, approached the the work and, I, and a lack of professionalism, I think, because I didn't want to be there. And I was like, well, you know what, this is my job. I'm very fuck lucky to have it. Yeah. And it can be fun. I, I, like, why am I going to make this boring for myself? Like, it's, I'm not. I, I'm the only one who's, you know, I'm the one who's, who's, uh, who's struggling here. No yeah. one else is not bothering anyone else. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm lean gonna in. actually lean in and and try acting. Yeah. Like, in a different way. Yeah. Um, did it become more fun for you when you did? So much more fun and so much more not just fun but um, engaging and 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 uh, just the curiosity came up with yeah. something that I find now is a key to acting is being curious. If you are not curious about um, a character or why they say or do the things they do, then you're just uh, saying lines in a believable way. Yeah. You know? And I remember an acting teacher of mine, uh, his name's Tony Greco, and he, he's, uh, he helped me a lot. And he shouts at me a lot. And he 
he would say, aren't you curious? Aren't you, like, where's your curiosity? <laughs> and I was like, you're right. I, why am I not curious? I've got to get curious. And that's, that's when you do things that, you know, maybe the director doesn't like, but you have to be willing to be embarrassed or do the wrong thing, you know, because yeah. it might be the right thing. What was it like acting with Adam Driver? I mean, who knew at the time he would become this, like, did you, did anybody feel it, like, on set? Like, he's going to be big. This is going to... I think there was talk about that. I didn't work with him much at all until that season. Right. So I didn't know him very well. Yeah. Um, just through, you know, through Lena and what she told me about him. And I I, I did see that he was a, a really good actor and, and had something. But no, no one knew it was. It He's going to be like a sex until, pilot. Until like, you know, the, the later seasons when he started getting jobs. And then there was one big job. And there was one season where he got um, nominated for a Golden Globe or something. And all of us girls are like, wow. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like we're over here yeah, too. I know. But was it different then? Like I don't, I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, but. I wonder how different it would be if girls came out now with like social media and like all this work. shit. It wouldn't work. I, you I, don't think it would work? Mm -mm. Why? Because because I think that what our show came out right before Me Too happened, and as you know, feminism was sort of finding its its place in the sort of the current culture and vernacular, and we were sort of figuring out what that was. Right, we didn't really know. We didn't. We, we were sort of guessing. We thought we were building it, and we kind of were. But we had. We didn't. When when Me Too happened, we were like, "Oh, okay, that was the direction it's going. It's not because the direction we were going in was, we're not precious. We don't. We don't. We're not fragile flowers, and we are. We can be reckless with ourselves and our bodies, and laugh about it, and chalk it up to an experience that shapes us and. And um, and I think the thing not not only the stories that she's telling and the the episodes themselves, but also the way that we we worked would would today not be um, acceptable to people. I mean, because we we touched each other, you know, between mm. between when the camera wasn't on mm. to to show to when we blocked things out. Yeah, you know, we we would uh, there was no. Well, there was no such thing as an intimacy. Yeah, coordinator. Co coordinator. Yeah. So, it it was more about um, being uh, sort of sort of owning not just our sexuality, but all the shitty stuff that comes with it as well, and making fun of it. Yeah. Rather than being angry about it. So, do you it. think today people would like judge the show harshly? Well, it's been judged since, yeah, and I feel like judged. now it has like. It's having like a, a resi people are rewatching it yeah, now. I know, and I, I'm trying to figure out why. And I think that the the more forgiving of it because it's a bit dated. Right. It's like, oh, back then. Yeah. You know, back then they could do yeah. shit like that. Yeah, but there are there are moments where people would say that you know, let's say, let's talk about the any one of the sex scenes that might people might see as um, as degrading or or borderline assault or something. And the way uh, the way Lena treated the writing was that it's funny. Yeah. And it's it's a I'm it's okay and I'm gonna make light of this because it's something we all experience. Yeah. I <laughs> that I don't know if I, there's some things I don't even know if I can say. Oh my god, you can say it. It's been time. <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that it's just not the feminism that ended up <laughs> happening yeah <laughs> but you know you can i don't think there's anything wrong with it yeah i don't think it perpetuates um uh more um you know puts us in a dangerous position more dangerous position it's just it's just different what we were doing yeah do you still talk to lena i loved your friendship so much lena is uh one of my favorite people in the entire world and she was working with her had its it's uh, ups and downs. The downs were that, um, you know, she's so she's so involved in her work that at times it's even hard for her to separate the reality from from the professional world or the fiction, you know, because she is 
she's observing all the time. Yeah. And sometimes I watch her on interviews and maybe I've watched with her and been like, oh my God, you're glazed over. You are so not paying attention. Yeah, You're yeah. so thinking about something else. She's like, I totally was panicking. Yeah. And I can see it when she's gone. Yeah. Right? So, and I and I could see that on, you know, every time if we went to a, an event together, I saw that, and I, I'm trying to have fun, and I see the glazed over look. She's, she's, you know, doing what celebrities do when they want, like, need to get through something they don't want to be in. It's just, you know, sort of observe and you know, get through it. Yeah. And I'm trying to be more... Have, present. Ha, yeah, more present. But I understand that self-preservation. And then also at work, you know, it was like I I wanted to talk and she's thinking about lighting. You know, and right. that's her job. You know? So but do you think working together was like not the that, I'm just talking about friendship. the negative side, but that, yeah. that was the side where I would get a bit stroppy at times because I didn't fully understand it. And then I get stroppy sometimes because I asked her, for one thing and one thing only I was like right whatever you want because a lot of the things that happened uh were things that were very similar to things that happened to me or that she you know she wrote sort of uh versions of of my story and sometimes directly quoted me actually one of the monologues at the end with that big fight with Adam mm -hmm. uh I didn't like what was written and so she she came into my room and and uh, she was like gave me a pen and paper and she was like just write it. I was like okay. So um, that thing about like because I have a fat ass and and good mm. hair. Mm. Like, I wrote that. <laughs> um, That's cool though. That, that was got pretty to, like, cool. That's the nice it. part. Yeah. yeah. But um, but sometimes she would get she would get too close to home and I'm like please don't make me an artist please don't turn just into a painter or an artist yeah and, oh, okay. um, just because that's the one thing that's like, like just you. just preserve that for me please yeah and um i don't think it was her fault but one day i walked in and there was a massive canvas on set when i'm married to that um yeah yeah you married that that guy yeah thomas john is the uh, character and uh and I was like, no, no, this is, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this. Yeah. And, and then I was talked into it, and it, but it didn't happen again. We didn't use it. Yeah, it wasn't like a bit, you didn't like become a painter. We sorted it out, yeah. Yeah, so it was hard to separate a little bit, like your friendship, but also Jemima from Jessa. Oh, yeah, that that too. And then the community, she was stuck between a rock and a hard place of needing to work with the, the company and the producers and preserve a and appeasing like you yeah, yeah. that's tough that's so tough were you happy when it ended like were you a little relieved or were you sad i mean no i, I, I was uh, i'm not i don't mind endings of of things like that it's like i'm not i i was slightly it was slightly uh shocking that it was it was done i, I just remember going into uh, going into my dressing room after we wrapped and i was like oh my god it's done. And I was compelled to do like a selfie and a and post, which I'm humiliated by now. That was, <laughs> my face is like slightly sad. It was it's just way too earnest for Instagram. I oh my god, I need to find this pic. Yeah. Well, go, it was, it's back. In the archives. Yeah, yeah. Um so so yeah, I I, I and I was sad to to lose the paycheck, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> that was massive. It was like a job. Uh, yeah. I mean you don't have the this the support of that, you know, that that so Is it wild to you that like so many people wanna be actors, you know, sleep in their cars, all this shit, and you were like forced. <laughs> You were like, come do this. You don't want to, yeah. here, do it. Yeah. And like, you have the thing that works, but like somebody had to really get you to do it. It's wild and it's it's a bit, um, it's em it's embarrassing because it's, it's something that so many people want. And I understand the, uh, the sort of, Appeal. Anger. Oh, no, anger. the sort of anger that that might bring up in someone for me not being grateful mm. for it and for it actually being handed to me on a silver platter and me saying, nah, I don't want it. But I really didn't want it. You know, it's like it's like if you ask an architect, hey, you want to be on a hit HBO show? They'd be like, I don't know. Like, I need yeah, time yeah, 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 to yeah, think about you're that. You know, so you weren't, just, you're saying you weren't even in that direction. No, I like never you had. Before. You never. It's so crazy. 
And now, do you feel like, wow, this is what I, I was meant to plays. do? I did school plays. I was uh, mole in Wind in the Willows in middle school. So, yeah, I did that before. You Just that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you weren't, yeah. you weren't, had this dream of becoming, like, famous or... No, so it, it was hard. When I read, you know, the criticisms of people or, or heard directly from friends that I needed to be, that it was sort of a, a, offensive, that I wasn't more grateful for yeah. this. I, I understood their point of view, but I don't think they understood mine. Yes, there's an insane amount of privilege to, that, uh, to be given something that not only pays well, but... Um, you know, is for many people a dream job. Right. But it wasn't mine at the time. It became mine. It really did. It yeah. took a long time, but it became... I When I figured out what the point of of acting was, like, I didn't understand acting, really. Yeah. You know, I understood performing. I understood doing, uh, um, you know, make, making people laugh. It's something I, I like to do anyway. And that's just sort of what I did at first. But when I figured out, I, you know, I know I know about writing, I know about painting, didn't understand acting. And I used to get asked all the time, what's the similarity? Is there any similarity between acting and painting? I'd shut it down. No way, nothing. Um, and I understand that there is. And I, w I won't go into that, but the, be just because it's boring, but, cause, uh, but I, I get it now. And it's the hardest thing I've ever done. And I, and I, do, I, I do love it. And do you still paint? I do, I do paint, I mean, a lot less because time-wise. Yeah. Because I have the two kids and, um, and uh, you know, I did work throughout the pandemic, which I'm very lucky. Right. For. I mean, a lot, like the whole time. Well, um, let's talk about, let's talk about you growing up. You obviously have an accent, which I remember, <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed. Um, that's why she got famous. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, when... I saw you on, what was it, like, Busy Tonight? I remember that clip. Oh, yeah. I think I posted it because it was oh, so funny. Lola's uh, best. It was, like, with your sister, Lola. Um, and you guys were laughing about, like, you having an accent, but she doesn't really have an accent. So they're like, Joanne was faking it. So <laughs> And people did... bought it. Yeah. People believed no, people it. Did. She was the one who said it. And Lola said the best thing, which I think maybe Busy asked this or maybe... Uh, it came up, but and we talked about our third sister, and Domino was like, she has a Jamaican accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So, but d people did did believe it. No, I really do have an accent, which is kind of you know a bit sloppy now. It's a little bit mixed. Madonna. Wait, does does do, do Domino and Lola have the same accent as you? Domino is the old the uh, older is older than both of us. She's married to Penn Badgley. Yeah, she's she, a doula, and yes, and she has a, a, an English accent. Yeah, but Lola was only a toddler when she moved. Oh, here. so that's why she doesn't. Yeah. And how old were you when you moved here? Ten or eleven. But I I consciously kept it as a way to Smart. make friends. You know, to, in middle school because I was just like, I just thought if I do that, then I'll have something. To something offer. like cool. Yeah. And you're three sisters and one bro. Mm -hmm. How is it being three sisters? Are you all the same closeness? No, but do you have multiple I, siblings? We're three sisters. That's why I always ask because, like, I feel like three with sisters can be like a force. <laughs> yeah, a force. But we, the, it, yes, and it's tricky. But you know how it is. It's like oscillating. You know, one sister's in the doghouse at one time, right. and that, sometimes it's the other one. Wait, so you're the middle? I'm the middle. Oh, same. Yeah. So. Uh, Sometimes it's Domino and I, uh, you know, talking shit about Lola. Yeah. Sometimes it's Lola and I about Domino. And yeah. I'm sure it's Domino and Lola about me. You know, it's just, uh, I don't think, there have been times, though, where, you know, where family get-togethers where I, it's, we genu we do genuinely enjoy each other's company. Lola's the funny one. If we're gonna go there, yeah. Because I chose to. Um, <laughs> if we, Lola's the funny one. Domino is like the like sweet, soft spoken, you know, nurturing. Sort of, she drinks tea. You know, um, I hate tea. You hate I tea. I hate tea. I just when some I've said this before and I'll say it again. When someone invites me out, I can't. If someone invites me out to lunch, it's, I'll say yes, but I'm not going. Right, like uh, I'll say, yeah, 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 sure, lunch. I'm not doing lunch. I don't have time. Who has time to sit down for lunch? Yeah, I mean, unless it's a business. Wait, day. if it's dinner, is that better? 
Yeah, it's okay. the end of the day. You're winding yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no and, lunch. Yeah, no lunch. Waste of time. And, uh, or a coffee or a tea. Coffee is, is, is bad enough. It's just, it's just because it's just coffee. Right. I, I want either a drink or let's go do something. Let's go to an estate sale or let's, you know, go, uh, Let's go follow a person down the street. You know street. what I feel like people do here? I feel like it's an American thing. Tell me if you agree because you're British. Mm. But like I feel like when people are like, oh, do you want to go get a coffee? You're almost offended because you're like, oh, great. You want to give me 15 minutes of like your time. Mm-hmm. But they're actually being like polite to you. Right. Because they don't want to assume that you would sit down for a whole dinner with them or like drinks with them. Yeah. But like what's a coffee? A coffee. Are you just sitting and drinking a coffee? Yeah. So don't do that with your mind. Coffee sometime. I'm like, no. I get coffee in the morning to function. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I just. I would rather let's meet. Let's meet at night, and yeah, and either make something fun of it, or let's just call it what it is and let's have a meeting. But your sister drinks tea. So or then the next one down that's even worse is. Let's have a tea. So it's like double no fun. Yeah. You know, it's like it's not even caffeine. Yeah. Don't offer a tea. Don't, don't get, you can offer me a tea. It's fine. If I'm, once I'm there, I'll take the tea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's just one thing that sort of describes Domino. She loves a tea. She loves a tea. So she's just, you know, she's just calm with, um, but also used to be uh, in the, I guess it was the late 90s, early 2000s. She was just the cool, like the best pickup artist of all time. I mean, she used to, uh, we lived in the West Village and she would go to these nightclubs, you know, when Leonardo DiCaprio was going yeah. out, when like clubs were a thing and there was, uh, you know, models and yeah. famous people with bottle service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember her Like One in. Oak or whatever. Yeah, oh, before that. I, wanna, I remember One Oak, but it was, the places were Life, Lotus, Mumba, uh, spa, uh, what am I, what am I, forget? well, Don Hills was more my place, but. Wait, so she was a pickup artist, what do you mean, like? Meaning she just, she just ended up with the coolest people. Oh, really? At the time, you know, either they were at our house or she had run away with them, like, you know, she just oh. figured it out and she was, she was just, I just remember coming home in the middle of the night and just the smell of smoke and just thinking oh, I want to go out so <laughs> wait how old were you why couldn't you go well I was two years younger so if she's already underage she was 16 yeah you know I was 14 did she end up though taking you and in... no never no I because I I didn't I did my own scene I think I did growing up in New York in the early 2000s it was either um you were either doing the sort of club thing with you know, the, the yeah, pulling up in an Escalade to bungalow eight, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, with, you know, fancy people and some sort of entourage and you don't know anyone. and Or you're doing uh, bars in the Lower East Side. Mm-hmm. It, and that's a completely different, different vibe. scene and, and, and a different vibe. And I did kind of, you know, go back. You're more of the that. bars. I style. liked that one too. I liked the idea of... Um, that was just just felt more dangerous. You know? So you were always in New York. You never did like L.A. Mm-hmm. anything like that. Would you? I'll do, I, yeah, I don't care. Like, I'll do anything. I, just, I just, yeah. I, I'm. I'm are you like of, attached to New York? Mm-mm. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I think I. I'm not really attached to New York or my house. So I'm. I. I would be willing to move somewhere. I don't know about L.A. I've been there for months at a time, and I. I tried. I tried. You tried. I tried. It's just, it's just, I, we don't need to have that conversation, but I just, it was just, everyone was too, everyone was so well. <laughs> and I'm like, this can't be real. Like everyone is the same level of wellness. Oh my God. So what do you think of like the wellness stuff? Well, it's a veneer, isn't it? It's like that whole thing about LA is a veneer. It's like, what are you working on? What are you working on? It's like you could have ten dollars in your bank account. Yeah. You're saying like someone who's a millionaire, and you're both at the same coffee shop, but right, you're working on a project that will never get made. You know, <laughs> but you're all working on you're something. You're all working on something, and you're fine. You're good. You're well. I don't know. I just it, there's something about I, I don't I don't. Uh, Maybe it's the sunshine. Maybe it's the smoothies. Maybe it's the no. The smoothies uh, suck, and the, the food sucks. No going out. You know, no one goes out. Really. Everyone stays in their house. Well, you have to because it's just such a schlep to get. Yeah, everywhere. 
But, um, you know, in New York, you know, everyone's, I guess everyone's somewhat bipolar or borderline. But suddenly they move to L.A. and they're okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. There's just like this, this uh, con con contagious. Well, it's the weather. Thing. It just makes everyone so okay. happy. It's the weather. Um, so you have two kids. Yeah. So you're a single mama. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I never know if because my mom was a single mom because my dad wasn't in the picture. I actually looked up the the definition of a single mom. Good I wasn't you. sure I if it you. if it meant um raising the kids by yourself, no help. Yeah. Or just that you're not living with your What did it say? So there were there were um like it wasn't it wasn't straight up. It wasn't straight yeah. up. I always yeah. thought it was you know, if you're a single mom, then there's no help. There's no help. Yeah, I, I and I agree with that more so than the other thing. And it's at times it's been, well, I'm single now, fully single now. I don't have a partner or a boyfriend and a husband and that. So it's much more single than I, I, I wasn't really a, ever a single mother until the last two years um, because I shared the kids with their father. And then, uh, then uh, Alex raised them with me, and now, and and now the the father, you know, on sometimes just gets busy, and I take the kids more. I have the kids more often. So yeah. right now we're in that phase I where see. I just have them more often, and uh, yeah, I have them during the week, and he has them some weekends. That's know? nice. Sometimes I look at that. I'm married, but sometimes I look at that and I'm like, that might be nice. Like sharing, like having the days off. Is there oh, any well, my God, I don't think I could ever do it any other way. No, so you, you probably could. I, I would have to if I had to. Right. And I'd figure it out, but I'd need therapy yeah. to figure out how to no, do it. No, but that you get like actual off. like time off. Yeah. Like but days. There, were there was a time where... Um, I split the kid, uh, we split the kids 50-50 and it was week on, week off, week on, week off. Oh. That was amazing, but a bit strange because, uh, you know, adjusting to the, them coming back, it took a few days, you know, to feel right. like a it's, parent again. Yeah. And also not having them, it was like, oh, I can go balls to the wall, fucking go nuts for a week. <laughs> and then that comes and bites in the ass that come Monday morning when they're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how you have to figure out the balance. Yeah. So, But it's nice having the weekends, the weekends off for sure. Yeah. What do you like to do on the weekends? I don't even know what day it is most of the, t like most of the time. And, but so I don't really differentiate that much, but I, um, I stress out just as much as I do on the weekday. <laughs> yeah. But I, I suppose I, ch I, I just like the quiet. I just, I putter. Yeah. I putter. I move things from there to there, and I go over there, and I do the same thing, and I zhuzh, and then I maybe go and see someone uh, for a drink, or... Um, Did you always want to be a young mom? Mm-mm. No. Mm -mm. No. It just I, happened that way? Yeah. I mean, I... Because I, you have, like, two... You're 38. You have two... How old are your kids? Like, um, three teens. Three teens. 12 and 10. Wow. My a girl and a boy? Yeah, my daughter's 12 and she'll be 13 in September. Oh, bat mitzvah. Wait, Apparently, you're that's what she thinks she's having a bat mitzvah. I'm like, dude, you're not even pressed up. You need to be studying now. Well, you, the Dalal family, because oh, my God. husband, my family is Israeli. And I wait, remember. Wait, wait. How do you know that? What, because, Dalal, because right? I know. Because mm -hmm. when we were, when girls came out, I think I was still living in Israel. I lived there for a while. And when we were, you know, obsessed with you and we were like wait do you know and i remember we were like the Del there's like a cafe de la suzanne, suzanne de la center the dance yeah, yeah that's the dance center um yeah so that. your family's like very connected to like lots of different we're jews and we are iraqi jews iraqi jews <laughs> yeah. and israeli jews and like, israeli israeli have you iraqi. been to israel ever yeah yeah oh course. you have yeah yeah i, I think been, you would not like it a lot but my uh ex-husband um was orthodox when i met him what yeah 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 that was an adjustment more for him than me <laughs> he was orthodox yeah 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 he how orthodox. did you meet him um that is, I mean, I'll just 
not going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> because it, I don't think he'd want me to tell you. Okay. But anyway, that he um, he was orthodox, but, you know, as a lot of, you know, he was raised orthodox and he was in his early 30s when I met him. And I think I had a, a rebellious streak and I think that was the the draw to me. Yeah. It was like, oh, this is my ticket. This is a great ticket. Yeah, yeah, Out yeah. of here. Not that he, but he, he, I think he thought he wanted out, and then there was this, the guilt. That but you, you know. but you were together. I mean, it must have been a lot more than that. You were together for so many years. Yeah, seven, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to say anything. So I'll just offend a bunch. Of you no, don't offend say. anybody. Yeah, Let's yeah. talk about City on Fire, your okay. new show. Oh um, Oh God. Yeah. No. 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 Go on. Okay. Are you still thinking about? <laughs> no. No. I okay. was just thinking. No. 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 It was. I'm just thinking of some of the reviews. Oh, yeah. why are they not good? No, but it's kind. Of, no, they're not. They're not great. I don't think. Well, let's talk about City on Fire. Aspect, I've though. I've watched a few episodes. I'm really into it. My husband's actually watching with me. That doesn't happen a lot. You look like Billie Eilish. They tell you that. Yeah, I got yeah. that before. Okay. Um, but thank you. You're welcome. That's a compliment. She's like twelve, so. Yeah. <laughs> so you should be you should appreciate yeah. you look 12 uh -huh. um so i like it because it's for me but also my husband can watch it with me because there's like murder in it that's how you get like a man to watch something you know? <laughs> you're like there's shooting i swear it's not just like you know um so it's on apple tv which is super bougie and you're in it yeah it is bougie the minute i saw you were in it nico tortorella's in it i mean that's like a, a cast that people people want to watch right this character is like different for you though it is she's like yuppie it's it's different but it's in line with the characters i've played lately which is you know the the, the principal in sex education right. and then the you know uh Mo i can't remember in conversations. melissa yeah. in conversations with friends um and now this it's sort of this is like a, an extreme almost you know cartoon version of the the adults i've been playing you know i'm not saying it's written that way but the idea of me playing a sort of upper east side possibly republican one presenter you know yeah. on the board of saint bernard but that's in my head by the way yeah and uh and all of that and um work a coo and and wears a, a pantsuit pearls was that like weird for you the the fashion i loved it yeah it's really helpful because it puts and you wardrobe in that state of is mind. so it's so important. I've I've uh, I've learned uh, for me at least because it can really you can really lean into to to how the wardrobe makes you feel. It makes you, I mean a wardrobe can make you want sit differently. True. You know if you're yeah, wearing yeah, yeah. a pearl necklace or pearl earrings or have your hair in a certain way or wearing a beige a lot of beige, it's it, it you can just let that let that take you. You know and it helps um and the oh my god i remember doing that having the meeting with the hair and makeup and it's you know it's 2003 i'm like please don't give me a blowout please don't give me a blowout he's like we well, gotta do a blowout yeah i'm sorry i'm like oh god why do you hate a blowout like flat like straight <laughs> like, well your hair is like in a ponytail though in the in the show at times yeah, yeah. But there's a mo there's times where it's like straight down just yeah like clean you know that that was the thing and then we looked at a lot of references like you know Cheryl Crow and and um you know Jennifer Aniston or Drew Barrymore from that time or Madonna and it was a lot of that deliberate sort of curling iron curl mm -hmm. you know which we did for the a party scene a bit um but yeah the hair was atrocious in the in the way it was supposed I mean uh, we laughed a lot doing that but you got to film in New York which is super cool That's and great. convenient it's very convenient. So when the script came up, was this like an, an, an audition, right? Like you mm -mm. got, no? No. Damn, she's offer only, everybody. No, not, not always. But for this, is an offer. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah that so was... they came to you with the project, like, we want you for this. Yeah, which um, made it more exciting for me because it meant that they wanted more than what was on the page mm. if they're coming to me, yeah. right? Because they could go to anyone. For, uh, uh, there are more obvious options for I that character. If, yeah. If, yeah. And so coming to me, I was like, okay, so they want something that I can bring to this. And I, I figured out what that was, which is that 
her she loves her brother who is you know seemingly polar opposite right so if she loves him that means they were connected at one point that means there's something in common mm. so what her, does your that brother look was like? played by Nico yes and did he, you get along with him yeah like you guys it, vibed not just got not just got along it was more than that it was more um it was kind of em, um emotional like bonding right away because we started talking about the relationship and that and the intervention scene and uh and when when it came time to shoot that scene and we're blocking it by the way that scene you know they took as you know, like you probably know, they take hours and hours to shoot. And yeah. It feels like you've just done a marathon and and you've gotten, you know, it's the best performance of your, might be the best performance of your life, but then it gets edited down and you don't see all your favorite parts necessarily. Mm. But it works for the show. But do, but acting it out and blocking it, there was, when we were blocking it, he wouldn't look at me and he was like, he's like, just so you know, I'm not going to look at you because if I look at you, I'm going to lose it. Like, I need to, it's, it's kind of like you don't want to blow your load. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, in the rehearsal. Yeah. So, because there was just something about, and I felt the same like way. Like you didn't want to waste I it. I was on... already choked up before, I, as, before we started shooting it. Wow. So, yeah, even when the camera was, when the camera was on someone else, I took that opportunity to just get it out. And like, I was just like sobbing. Um, so, and it was that line where he says something about, uh, he said, if I'm, basically, if I don't create, I'm of no value to you because I don't have any work to sell. And it was that line. And maybe it's because I'm an artist and it's maybe it's because I'm, uh, you know, uh, that is my, that's my, my purpose, my trade, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, that I understood that, you know, we all have that feeling that if we can't deliver a product, especially in New York City, that's something, you know, that's something that defines how well you're doing, is it how much are you producing, right? Right, what do you do? What are you working on? What's yeah. being made? What if, what's the next thing? It really can feel like, you you know, you're worthless, you know, which you know, can lead to, you know, the drug addiction thing makes sense there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I do, I do adore him. Yeah, and you guys had I read like a a, a eBay oh, yeah. like thing together. Oh yeah, we're always showing. Well, no one is interested in my my uh, favorites list. You know, <laughs> I can't get anyone to look at my Etsy or eBay favorites list or the things I find on Craigslist or whatever. But Nico was he was interested. into it. Yeah. Um, oh my god, that's so funny. That's so niche. But he he he's better at it than me because he does. The one like Craigslist where people are selling, I, I don't know how to do that, but he'll find, you know, he'll drive to, you know, out to the boondocks and pick up a sculpture for $50, you know. <laughs> Did he ask you about any like parenting advice since he just had a baby? No. <laughs> he should. He should. I he knows he what does. he's doing. Okay. I sent him a present though. But you know what? That's they're good. in, they're in, they just had a baby and babies are, Babies are really like great. <laughs> like you just you just have to keep them alive, and uh, you know you feed the baby, wash the babies, put babies to sleep. Yeah, it's 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 a really it's a blissful phase for some people, and uh, you don't want to burst their bubble and tell them what's coming. Yeah, you know, <laughs> wait, just wait. Yeah. Um. So I saw you also said that one of the things you love most in life it, that makes you happy is like Leonardo DiCaprio's <laughs> first scene in um in uh Romeo and Juliet right yeah and you mentioned him again today I'm like do I'm, you um, are you feeling him big time right really now, like, yes because I have a 12 year old and so we went on a Leo binge right of uh, his fil films now, yeah in the over the last month we've been doing over two we've been doing we've done a lot of Leo and we're going back and we're, we're watching more. And so watching uh, Romeo and Juliet was just wild for me to see it again because I watched, I went to the theater to see it. Yeah. And uh, then what was another one? You know, I showed her all of them and, you know, as he got less 
uh, teeny, like teeny bopper looking. Yeah. She got less interested. Uh -huh, but but I kept more. going. <laughs> and I and watching him in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I think is the most impressive I've ever seen. Wait, I haven't seen, seen it. it. It's good. Yeah, it's good. But it's his performance that um, really blew me away because he's... I mean, it's it's and Brad Pitt is in it too. Yeah, but you were more impressed by Leo. Brad Pitt's just cool. That's just, he's just being he's really he's good in it. He's just cool. But what? But the joke was was Leonardo DiCaprio. He was playing this role that that was is it was sort of a farce on on actors who were full of themselves oh, and, yeah, so, yeah. and sort of uh, maybe on the decline. And uh, their careers on the decline, right? And he's a real uh, uh, sort of baby about it. And he and uh, Brad Pitt plays uh, his stuntman, who is also his driver. But it's really just his his best friend. And he, you know, he cries to him all the time about you know that he has to go to Italy now to make uh, spaghetti westerns and all of that. And there's this one scene that. I I put on repeat where he he does this scene where he, he's doing this movie that's kind of out of his wheelhouse because he's a Western actor. Uh, he plays he does westerns and he's always playing the bad guy and he's doing this this movie and <laughs> he's hung over and he can't remember his lines and he's also doing a really bad job, which is really hard to do right as an actor to act to, to act it's like bad. telling a lie right telling a lie uh, acting. You don't want to seem like you're telling a lie. It's not a Disney show, you know. You want to seem like you're telling because when someone's lying, that they seem like you're telling the truth. Yeah. But the audience also has to know if if that's the way the way it's set up that you're lying. So it's a little bit of both. And so with that in acting, it's the same. We want to see that he's trying, but he's just not succeeding. So it can't be too broad. Um, so he's just really good. He was just really good at being bad. And it made me laugh so hard because I just saw myself in it. With it, he was doing a good job, but I saw in his eyes how insecure he was as the character. And then the next bit is him going into the trailer, screaming at himself for not remembering his lines and for doing a terrible job, and saying he's going to blow his fucking brains out if he doesn't get these lines right. And uh, it's just so real. So you're on a Leo kick right now. Yeah. So who's your like top three Hollywood dudes? Leo, <laughs> and and you're yeah. single now, which like we need to mention because I feel like it hasn't. It's not really like out there. I did mention it in in one or two magazines. Yeah, I but it didn't. I don't think I didn't say like. I I just said I'm single. I don't think I said because you were married again. Oh, you weren't really married. No, I mean, let me just open this to me. No, um, no. Well, I wasn't really married to my first husband either. I just call them that. Oh. Call, that's just my thing. <laughs> I mean, because if you say girlfriend, boyfriend, people don't at restaurants or on the phone making appointments. Wait, so not, both of these weren't official marriages? No. <laughs> well, then that's good. This yeah, is great but news. In New York State, there's such thing as you can be proven to be a domestic partners. So if the, but there's no there was no legalities with either, with Either of but do you know that it's like listed that you were married? Yeah, I saw that. I saw okay, that. I don't know who. It's also listed that my son's middle name is Kirk, which is not true. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah. um, You're like, I'm not angry about the married thing, but don't make up a middle name. <laughs> well, the married, well, it's more true than the than that. Okay, so the th yeah. the three Hollywood dudes, Leo is one of them. Well, if I say it, then they're not going to turn up, are they? Because they, they might well, hear actually, this. Might, they, they might. They might turn up more than if you didn't say it. Okay, so I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Yeah. Um, let's see. No, I can't go for my. It, I can't go for Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe Leo. I don't know what he's like in person. I did, did meet him once though, and he was lovely. I'm sure he um, was. He actually came up to me at uh, the some after party, and. Uh, and gushed about how much he loves girls, which was really that's so cool, so funny. He was like, "I'm a huge fan." I'm like, "I'm a huge fan." Like, <laughs> I don't know, what do you say? And then my husband at the time shows up, and I'm like, "Oh, oh yeah, buzzkill, Mike, Mike, wow, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah." So here are my three. Um, 
I don't. I I've always ha- okay. I have the three. Okay, say the three. Jamie Fox. Shut up. Yeah. First of all, wish him well. He's not well right now. I know. Yeah, but. Jamie Foxx, that's a unique answer. Mm, I really find him very, very attractive. So when Katie Holmes was dating him, you were like, oh, Katie. Yeah, I was impressed. I was impressed. Okay, I like this. Third? Um, Colin Firth. (laughs) Is that my phone ringing? Should I go just turn it off? Is that no? We edit fine. That? Okay. First of all, you're very cognizant of like sounds and things. Uh, yeah, you're like I'm not gonna. I'm like okay, she's a professional, uh, <laughs> but okay, I love that. Colin Firth is just getting better and better. Is he well. married? I think he just got married. Yeah, wait, he's like sixty. So, but you also said that you never dated an actor. I've never dated an actor. No, I've never dated an actor. No, um, I haven't. But you would. Yeah, it depends. It depends. I, I. Maybe not. Yeah, I would. I would. You would. I, I wouldn't not date them based on the fact that they're just they're an actor. Um, would you answer like an Instagram DM from an a actor dude or an who, actor who was attractive? Yeah. Yes. Have you? Um, not from a dude. Not from a dude. Yeah, it was a female did, and a female, uh, an actress did. Like properly. slid in, like she propositioned me, but I didn't. I didn't. I entertained it just for, but I. I wasn't single at the time, but that that wasn't that wasn't why it was it was it just wasn't my thing. I'm not a lesbian. I just I I I I, I tried to be. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not not. I'm just I'm straight, but I also don't give a shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I just that's so I can't. I I I'm. Uh, you're straight, but you would be down. For, but I you're not I'm, that. I'm, I'm straight, but I'm I'm open. You're straight, but you're open. But I'm not. I'm not. I don't identify as, as as queer. If yeah. I, if queer, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm game. You're game. I'm game. But wait, I didn't finish my list. No, um, why? You said so three. Many. Okay, there are more than two. Uh, there's, um, uh, God. I love your list, by the way, my Leo. List. Colin oh, my Firth. list? Oh, my, I thought you said my list, but I was like, I know. And love your list, too. <laughs> oh, God. Jamie Foxx. Joaquin. Phoenix. I mean, that's I get an it. obvious one. I get it. That's an obvious one, but I also really loved when he, him and his, his, uh, so, sort of, when his chunky moment, when he, as, when he had the beard and he pretended that he, had qu- he quit acting and he was going to be a hip-hop producer. Do you remember that? <laughs> Yeah, he did. He, it was it. I think it was like maybe ten years ago or so. Wait, you're loving like the pudgy phases of people because I said, always do. Why? I always do in a man um, because there's a you don't listen, want there's nothing more unattractive than than, um, than a man who's self conscious about yeah. how he looks, right? Yeah. So when that you know when that happens, it just shows maybe they're just really enjoying food right now, or they just yeah. and, and there it doesn't. It doesn't hinder, you know, what where they go, what they do. What yeah, movies they I agree. Say. And it, it's also it just shows a maturity as well. And it doesn't mean they're gonna stay that way. But there is there is a it's an aging thing that I like. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm. I can't see myself with someone in in their early twenties. Can you see yourself with someone who's like super healthy, like eats salads, works out, doesn't smoke cigs? No, 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 I can't. I mean, I, d- I don't, I, you can go to the gym, but I'd rather you, you know, like pick up some furniture or climb a tree, you know, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's where I want your body yeah. to come from. I, I you know, yeah. like the, the muscles are difficult for me. Um, so yeah, walking, and who, uh, you know, it's more, what about the people that everyone's obsessed with right now? Who, who are they? I don't know anyone's name. I, I really, really? Can't. people are obsessed with um, Pedro Pascal. Are you in him? No, you don't know him. What are you watching on TV? Are you watching any reality shows? Any Bravo? What do you watch? Uh, TCM. What's that? Kind of classic movies. It's on Channel Thirty Two. <laughs> you watch? Just- I watch cable. I do. I, I do. I keep it on all day. But then I have the app as well, so I just keep it on. It's not good. It's not professional. It's not good. It's like being a writer who doesn't read, but or being a writer who only reads like Victorian novels. Um, so I need to catch up. 
Uh, God, wait, the, I'm, I know I'm going to leave here and go, fuck, I, I, I've got, I've got what, one. more of the dudes for the list? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll figure it out. Okay, these are some really good lists, but everyone, go watch <laughs> um, City on Fire on Apple TV. It's really good. It's a, it's a kind of a murder mystery vibe. Yeah, it's a murder mystery where the, the, uh, the who done it is probably less interesting than the relationships. Mm. I think, yeah. And it takes place in New York, and it takes place and- in New York in a time where I was Sam, the main girl who, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, dating uh, Pete Davidson. I know, I know who that is actually. Were you- and, um, <laughs> is he on your list? Uh, no, <laughs> no. But a, fu- a a funny person, you know, would be uh, cool. Yeah. Oh wait, I know who's someone who's, but I know him. I know him. I can't say it. Okay. Um. So, but uh, yeah. So, what was I going to say? Oh yes. So when I read the script and the idea that that uh, I wasn't up for <laughs> for the role of the twenty one year old <laughs> who's like you know free spirited and vivacious and magnetic and tragic with the, you know long hair yeah. was kind of shocking a, for you. you know, a reality check for me. I was like, but wait, that. That's what I do. Yeah, That's yeah, my yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Mm-mm, not anymore, Jam. You're closer to 40 than yeah. 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I like, actually. But it, 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 was, it was funny. And, and I didn't, you know, the, these kids have never been to Don Hills or heard of Don Hills. And I'm like, I don't get to go back into Don Hills where you, they shot. But you were like, you were like the historian on set. <laughs> like kind telling, of. Like telling kind everyone, of, like, yeah. I live this, like, let me break it down for yeah, you. Yeah, and by the way, that is not what the basement at Don Hills looks like. If anyone remembers the basement, Don Hills was not a, you know, like a cute, uh, sort of den with fairy lights. You know, yeah, I mean, I wish it was, but it was more like a hallway with rats in it. But it was a fun reliving experience for you. I didn't get to go, so no. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, watching it was fun, and then talking to Jesse, who directed some of the episodes, uh, was fun too. You know, he's uh, Jesse also directed a lot of girls' episodes, so we know each other well, and we would sort of commiserate he'd come and like rub my shoulders and he's like is this so loud I'm like probably not I'm like but just do it it really like (laughs) are all episodes out to watch I think they are now okay everyone or maybe they're not maybe they're episodes they're they're weekly I don't think they're weekly okay then okay better than me okay City on Fire, Apple TV, Jemima Kirk. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Fucking honor for me, honestly. (laughs) And I just want to tell people how this happened. It was so Jemima (laughs) because I never do this, but I just for some reason assumed that like you wouldn't see if you got like an incoming request or something. So out of nowhere, I just commented on one of your posts, like come on my show. And you were like, what the fuck is this? I was like, it's a podcast. You're like, I know. I'm like, okay. And I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly how I would want it to happen. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.